Hi, Tom. <laughs> Ooh, hello, the big Brian. question is whether my mum and dad will be able to log on and manage the technology of it. Yes, yeah, <laughs> same. Look there, mum. <laughs> uh, do, do you regularly Zoom with your mum and dad? My family, my extended family regularly Zoom, but my parents can't seem to get the hang of it. Um, oh, hi, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> my sister's made it on. <laughs> well done. She's, uh, she's right. right, look, it's 7.01, so I think we need to get cracking. So um, welcome to... Firstly, to our participants, to um, both our authors, but also uh, our representatives from um, the authors getting published. So, uh, thank you to Charlotte, thank you to Haley, and thank you to Cicely. Um, uh, on my screen, they're top and top top corners and at the bottom. Um, but most importantly, thank you to our three authors um, who have joined us. Um, and and finally, thank you to the audience who are all um, looking absolutely lovely. Um, even somebody's put their hand up, but I'll come back to that. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to give you some idea of the structure. Um, we're going to be talking for an hour. Um, um, Charlotte, Haley, and Cicely will come up at certain times of the event to specifically talk about the books that they're involved in with, the, with their authors. So we'll do a little five minute segment at quarter past, half past and quarter to the hour. Um, that will form the structure for this event, frankly. So. Um, uh, the rest of the time, we're just going to be chinwagging. Um, me, me and three, um, uh, I say debut, uh, debut novelist, novelist, Philip has already, this is a second book in a year, so I'll come back to that. But thank you. Um, so Charlotte, Haley, and, and Cicely, do you want to disappear and we'll see you at, at your allotted times? Good. Hello, guys. Hello, team. How exciting is this? Very exciting. Yes, very. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, just to explain, today is, uh, the, is the day before you publish. And, uh, and I think that might be my fault while we're doing this, because um, I think I was busy tomorrow doing a, a launch for a fellow debut 20 author, Hannah Gold, who I know has already said hello. So hello, hello, Hannah, again. Um, ha what, where do we start with the three of you? I mean, goodness gracious, you're, um, this is such an exciting moment for you. And, and when did this... When did this process start? So Lorraine, I'll start with you. Uh, how long has this been in, in the coming? Yeah, a long time, I guess, I do think. Yeah, like 2016, I wrote, I don't know, maybe 40,000 words and sent it off to the Bath Novel Award and somehow got long listed and then hadn't finished the rest of the novel. So I had to like, had a month to finish the rest of the novel. So yeah, obviously it wasn't very good. Um, and I didn't get shortlisted, but that was the kind of beginning of, okay, well, I got longlisted. Maybe I'm not terrible at writing. I'll just keep going. So yeah, that's how many years is that now? Five. Oh. Um, and that's, so you've had, um, you've had your book in, in the kind of gestation for far, about five years. How long were you working on it before then? Yeah, before then, not long. Cause as I say, I sort of hadn't really finished it or sent it off. So maybe, I don't know, six months or something. That's all right. And yeah, Caroline, Caroline, how long have you been sort of planning, planning your author debut? Um, well, this this novel I, I started in 2016 as well. Um, I also entered the Bath Novel Award. I can't remember which year. It might have been 18, but I didn't get long listed. <laughs> um, but yeah, 16 is when I started writing it. Um, but I guess I've been trying to write for a long time before that. Yeah. Um, and then I finally got my deal in 2019, which was very exciting. Um, yeah, but it's now February 2021. Here we are, finally. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done. Well done. Philippa and yourself, how, how long has your sort of writing process been, been going on to get to this point? Um, so I've, I've been writing for over 10 years now. So um, I wrote a terrible, never even finished novel that went in the bin slash file drawer. And then I wrote short stories for quite a long time. And then I think I started writing my debut, which is not this one, it's um, my debut is called Little White Lies. And I think I started writing that in 2015. So similar to Caroline and Lorraine, actually, it's about five years from starting the novel to, to it being published. Um, and, and with this one, um, this one was an idea that um, my agent and I submitted to the publishers when we were pitching my debut. Um, and I'd originally sent um, a different idea to my agent, which she, decided wasn't right and she was right because she's always right mm -hmm. and so I cobbled the pitch for this book together in about a weekend and we sent it off and they said oh yeah we really like the sound of that and that became my two book deal 
but I didn't actually have any clue what the book was really going to be other than two sentences that I'd cobbled together over a weekend. So <laughs> then it took a lot of sorting out after that. <laughs> and you're all part of what's termed the debut 20. Um, uh, Lorraine, what is the debut 20? Can you explain? Yeah, so it was a Facebook group initially, I think, a group of authors that were publishing in 2020 when the pandemic first hit and wanted to support each other and kind of find ways to promote each other and support each other. And I kind of snuck in because I was never meant to debut in 2020, but I kind of snuck in. Um, and it's really lovely. We have like weekly Zoom calls, don't we? And we have lots of support for each other on social media. How, really how, nice. how big a group is the debut 20? There's about 70, 70 or 80 authors, I think. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's grown. It's grown quite, quite big. Quite a, few, quite a few of them are here tonight, I think. So they say hi in the chat if you're a debut 2020. I know um, I know. I interviewed Fran, uh, Frances Quinn um, with her smallest one. She was one of the, the group as well. And um, so how many have been published so far? I mean, do we, are this, have you been keeping a note, um, Philippa? Or is there a note on how many? Have... Um, that's a really good question. I think actually pretty much all of them would be. I think maybe Lorraine and Caroline publishing February 2021 are maybe the, the final people, partly because some people who were originally going to be published in 2020, their book's publication date got pushed back because of the pandemic. So some, some of people have just spilled a little bit into the year 2021, but, um, uh, and Lorraine, like you say, you've obviously snuck in somewhere, <laughs> but, but yeah, so happy to have you. So, um, so I think, I think probably, I think we probably, after tonight, we, and maybe Hannah Gold's tomorrow as well, we'll pretty much all have been through that first year. Brilliant. I'm getting a lot of love for the debut 20. First rule of debut 20 is nobody knows how many people belong to debut 20. That's Tom, Tom <laughs> Apparently 81, Louisa said in the chat. Oh, wow. <laughs> Tom Benjamin, he's uh, coming to that. Go the D20s. Uh, Sarah feeling left out. I'm debut 21, but hello. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I like to them too because there's another group, the, the Davies Twenty Ones, and they've also been very supportive of, of Lorraine and I. In, yeah, in yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of how many emails I've had from um, fellow Davies Twenties um, asking me to um, help launch their books, which is uh, it's that's an absolute honour to be getting so many. Anyway, your books. I'm um, uh, three very different books. I might add. You, you're dealing with you know um, social housing, women's rights. And, uh, and and Frenchman, which is uh, that's a great uh, great combination. I mean, where, where what else? What more would you want in uh, in, in, in books? But um, I, I, having read the uh, the sort of end blurb uh, of the books, you've all had so similar a kind of process to getting there, and you're so almost grateful for the the parental power, passion that came from uh, the, the support that came from your parents, which uh, that for me that really stood out actually in a, in a kind of um, in a wonderful sort of way. So, do you feel the parent, your parents' love of books and love of reading and love of supporting you guys has been so important to to get here, Lorraine? Yeah, I mean, I just remember my mum taking me to libraries all the time. I used to go to like one. We grew up in this small town, Potter's Bar, um, and there were kind of, I think actually two libraries in that town. So, my mum would take me to one library. I'd get six books. Then we go to the other library. I'd get six books. I'd come home. I'd come home with twelve books, and that was just yeah. That was just brilliant. That's what I really remember. Fantastic. And Caroline, do you, do you, do you remember those days? Yeah, same. I was always at the library growing up. Um, both my parents love books. Um, yeah, my dad writes as well. So yeah, definitely a love of reading and writing was very much part of my childhood. Yeah. And Philippa, a little shout out to your mum and dad. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, mum. Hi, dad. I'm just saying I'm glad you managed to log on through Zoom with no <laughs> maybe glitches. <laughs> um, I actually, my sister and I, who's also here, hi, Catherine, we actually, um, we grew up without a television until we were about 11 and 12. Um, you, mum and dad will have to explain why they didn't wouldn't want us to have a TV, but we didn't have one. So we just read all the time. And like Lorraine is saying, and like Caroline is saying, we would go to the library pretty much every week and we'd both get out, you know, a stack of books and we would just read them. And, um, you know, our, par our parents read to us as well. So I always feel like books are in my DNA and it kind of makes sense to me that ultimately I ended up trying to write my own. Um, and yeah, I, I read it all the time now as well. And it's just, for me, it's the same as eating and brushing my teeth basically to read. Yeah. 
So um, we'll be joined short in five minutes um, by Haley, who's Caroline's uh, agent. Um, best thing for us to do now is just to quickly chat with Caroline about your book. And um, so um, it's probably easier if you, uh, I, I trust you've been rehearsing your sort of summary of the book and how you explain it without any uh, spoilers, that is. Um, so over to you, What to, to tell us about your book. Um, okay, so my book is a dual timeline novel um, set in 2016 and uh, 1976, 40 years apart. Um, and it follows uh, a British woman who has to reassess her life after she discovers a secret about her birth that connects her to Switzerland. Um, and so she decides to go to Switzerland, um, where her mother spent time 40 years previously, to figure out exactly what happens there. Um, and it's set partly, this, the 1970s section is set during the women's rights movement in Switzerland. Um, so that's the sort of context of it. Yeah, I think um, some of the... Uh some of the aspects the women's rights aspects and um of, of about switzerland came as an absolute shock actually do, do i mean it would did they surprise you yeah i mean i think i i think i knew because i've been living here for nearly eight years now and i think i knew that um women in switzerland didn't get the vote till 71. i think i knew that when i moved here which was really shocking to me but there were lots of other things after that um that came quite late as well sort of equality in marriage and things like that so that was yeah it was quite a revelation um and really interesting to sort of find out about that so yeah that I, think that I didn't set out initially thinking I was going to write about that but then the more I researched and looked into it I thought well this is a really fast I found it fascinating anyway I hope other people will find it fascinating um and I thought I really want that to be in my book part of the context and so it features um two time zones 76 and 2016 Sylvia and Jess um, and and uh, is there um, anything in you in the two characters um, that you've written about? Probably um, nothing direct, I, I would say. But yeah, I think I probably I think any writer would say that there's bits of them um, perhaps exaggerated or embellished um, for drama. <laughs> but uh, yeah, nothing like neither of the characters is me, but I'm sure there's aspects of me in, in both of them. Mm. And um, how did you do your research uh, in, in what is a very complex sort of political system? Yeah, it really is complex. And um, yeah, I, I read books. I went to the library and read various um, books about the women's liberation movement. There's there were quite a few documentaries around, um, a couple of really good feature films that I watched. Um, and I met with um, um, various people as well. So yeah, I, again, when I started it, I didn't Think I was going to do this and then once I sort of got into it I realized you know it's, <laughs> it's quite a, a mountain once you start digging you realize it's such a huge subject um, and although like my story is fictional my, my characters are fictional but obviously I wanted the historical context to be accurate so that was that was really important that I got that right as well so I, mm. by the time it got to sort of final draft I was fact checking for the millionth time and driving myself crazy. <laughs> yeah I think the the the, the the topic of children being taken away and, and uh, is, is, a, is a very emotive one. And uh, did you manage to speak to uh, firsthand to any of those who were impacted or affected by that? Um, not directly face to face, but um, there was an exhibition um, touring the country here, um, which is what first got me interested in the subject. And it had sort of real, real life um, testimonials from people who'd gone through it. So that was my sort of starting point. Um, and then I read a book on the subject and met with, again, that featured lots of interviews with, with former um, foster children who'd been through it. Um, uh, and so I then I met with the author of that um, book and she, yeah, gave me a lot of extra info. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Verity Borthwick um, asked a question, what does Caroline mean by moving here? I, I, you know, I know the answer, but let's... Oh, sorry, yeah, I didn't know. What is the <laughs> connection <laughs> with her research into Switzerland? Yeah, I live, the, I am in uh, my flat in Lausanne in Switzerland, which is where I've lived uh, since 2013. Um, after I'm British and um, was living in London before I moved out here. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's, this is a, a, a very international little um, event tonight. We've got people zooming in from uh, uh, all parts of the world, actually. I, 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 I saw only today people zooming in from a number of areas, uh, states in, in America, apart from anything else. Um, Let's jump on a few comments. Uh, Emma, I love your book, Caroline. The woman's right stuff uh, in it is fascinating and enlightening. 
And um, that's my lovely friend Emma. Hi, Emma. Emma, yeah, yeah fantastic. Good stuff. So um, I tell you, we're waiting for Haley now. Haley, you need to join us now. We've, we've hit quarter past. Hello, Haley. Hi. <laughs> fantastic. So Philippa and Lorraine, if you guys want to just um, dip out for a second, we'll have a quick um, chat with with Haley. So so Haley is uh, Caroline's agent. And um, so uh, massive thanks for joining us, and Haley. Perhaps you'd like to tell us um, about your feelings for the book and uh, and why you guys are so excited about it. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'll keep it very very brief, so you guys can can crack on with the book stuff. But um, yeah, actually, before the event, I thought I'd go back and trace right back to our, the first conversation we ever had, Caroline, when you first submitted the book to me. Um, and I think the most amazing thing that a lot of people probably don't know is the the strap line that you see on the front of the book, which is you only get one life, but what if it isn't the one you were meant to live, is actually the the one line pitch that Caroline sent in her original submission to me, you know, like two, two and a bit years ago, um, which is quite astonishing because I'm sure when the editors come on, they'll they'll explain that that doesn't really tend to happen, that one kind of line manages to make it all the way through from submission right to publication. Um, and I think it just shows that Caroline always knew what she was writing and what she wanted to say and had a very kind of clear idea of her readership, which is always great as an agent, but it also just had the most powerful story of, you know, a mother and a daughter and their relationship with each other and the way that the, the politics and the kind of rich detail in the background is threaded into that and the two timelines and how they weave together and then a mystery at the heart of it as well. Um, it just all comes together to deliver just such a gorgeous novel. And I'm so, so proud of you and so excited and you've waited so long. Caroline was one of the people that had to have a six month pushback from um, last summer when it was supposed to be published because of because of everything going on. Um, and sadly, we're still in, we're still in it. But um, yeah, I'm so proud of you and, and thank you for being so patient and brilliant through all of it. And I'm so excited for it to come out. Thank you, Hayley. I, yeah, thank you for loving this book right from the beginning and just championing it and yeah getting getting it to where it is now so yeah massive thanks to you <laughs> thank you Hayley for joining us and uh but yeah no we'll see you uh, see you after the event thank you brilliant thank you well done uh, Philippa come back um so let's move on to Philippa because I know Cecily, Cec Cicely will be joining us uh, at half past so Philippa your book Safe and Sound um Amazing, amazing read. Uh, do you want to give us um, a, your quick two minute um, sort of summary about it and uh, what it's about? Yeah, sure. And um, what I'll, because I have a tendency to give terrible spoilers away when I try and explain my books because they're thrillers. So they normally have some twists and turns in them. What I'm actually going to do is just read you the blurb off the back of the book. <laughs> so I can't really go too wrong with that. I can read that as well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, in a small London bedsit, a radio is playing. A small dining table is set for three and curled up on the sofa is a body. Jen is the one who discovers the woman, along with the bailiffs. All indications suggest that the tenant, Sarah Jones, was pretty, charismatic and full of life. So how has her body lain undiscovered for ten whole months? Wow. That's a fairly that's a fairly dark start. Where 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 did that idea come from? Um, interestingly enough, um, well, one of one of the things that people kept saying to me when I was talking about this book that I was writing and I was sort of um, sharing the idea with people is they would kept saying to me, "But that would never happen. Like that's silly. That would never happen." And the reality is, it's actually based on a true story. Um, so I don't know if any of you out there. Oh, sorry, Susan's like, no spoilers, I'm on chapter or whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if any of you um, ever saw the docudrama called um, Dreams of a Life with Zoe um, Ashton in it. It was um, based on the true story of um, a woman called Joyce Vincent, who um, lived in North London. And again, she was known as being very charismatic, very sort of ambitious, kind of um, quite high flying in her career, um, very popular amongst her group of friends. And um, she died in her flat at the end of um, 2003 and her body wasn't discovered into, until 2006. Um, and I watched this film, this docudrama, um, probably in about 2013 and I, just couldn't get the story out of my head. I just couldn't stop thinking about it. 
and um eventually i just realized that i needed to write write my own it's it's the story is different from the real life story obviously quite different but um it's yeah it i just felt i needed i needed to write something of my own about it and um so i did yes well done and what you're the one person who's already who published a book earlier this year is there is, i mean how the hell do you publish two books in one year i mean that's a that's a hell of a thing are you going to keep going at two books a year for the next hour well well the, the good news is it's actually one book a year so my last book came out your february the 6th of 2020 oh was it so okay. it's actually almost exactly a year ago so i'm on a i'm on a book a year schedule which um it's still quite a lot but it's it's manageable and uh, that's what um quite a few authors do most most, most commercial authors at least do yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So yes yes that's the plan so you, you show an incredible amount of insight into your into knowledge about housing associations and the functions around that uh what research did you do uh in that regard um well when i was first writing the book i just made it up because i don't know jack about that <laughs> just I just made it up and wrote it however I thought it would be um and so I probably got loads and loads of stuff wrong um but and so I'm really sorry for anyone who works in the housing industry because I just made it up basically but I did I did at one point have to research um what happens when a tenant dies in their property because it because it does happen of course it happens yeah. um so I had to research all of that which was a bit morbid but um quite interesting so there's a whole there's a whole scene where Jen the housing manager is um has to go and report this to her boss and I, that was like where I'm like all my research I was like he's like you need to do this you need to do that and I was like yeah okay that's that's what it says on the website <laughs> Stu Cummins, I love Safe and Sound. It's such an exhilarating and tense read, but I found the humanity at the heart makes it such a memorable read. Congrats for publication day tomorrow. Yes, it's, it's tomorrow, everyone, not today. Um, Thank you, Stu. That's so lovely of you. Thank you. Do you know Stu? We've never met, but um, he's been an amazing supporter of, of lots and lots of us. And I think we, I think we sort of were on another zoom event with the diary of a debut novelist i think weren't we Stu? so i think we sort of met virtually then yeah, yeah. any of you got questions remember use the q a function it's much easier for me to 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 to, to get through those because i'm conscious there are millions of comments and i'm missing them um mental health issues explored was it difficult to have an understanding of jen's and anxiety issues um not really, partly because um, I'm a clinical psychologist, so my my day job is is working with people who have things like anxiety. So um, I, I was drawing a lot on that. Um, also, I think probably most of us have found the last year pretty stressful, and probably most of us have experienced anxieties of one kind or another. So there was definitely some times when I was writing some scenes and basically just transcribing what was going on with me. So um, there was a bit of theory and there was a bit of um, first-hand experience um, going in, but I hope, I hope it comes across as something that people who have struggled with anxiety of, or of one sort or another can relate to. I mean, hers is quite extreme, but um, uh, yeah, um, I hope it, I hope it resonates for people. It's a good question from Louise, actually. It's quite apt. Um, question for Philippa. Do you ever get disturbed or upset by some of your research or the content of, the, of your novels? Um, if it doesn't make me sound too weird, no. Um, <laughs> and I was thinking about this the other day, actually. I think um, I find it really interesting when people write about, you know, crime and thriller, and we, we often go to really dark places. And I think that often people who are writing about that stuff are often quite healthy because they are brave enough to go in and, and write about that stuff from a place of kind of normality. And part it, also in my line of work, I've, I feel like I need to be able to go to those really dark places so that when my clients are going there from their own experiences, I'm not going to be shocked and I'm not going to be overwhelmed and that they can feel like they can tell me their their disturbing narratives and I can say um that's awful but I'm not disturbed you know what I mean like mm -hmm. like that th that I need to be able to hold it for them so I think it's the same in my novels that I need I need to be able to go to those places break you know like comfortably um they're not nice places but I I don't shy away from them mm -hmm. I, I suspect the last um last year has been a tough 
tough existence for, when it has been the tough existence for so many people but in some ways you're at the front line dealing with uh, many people has it been a particularly tough year for you um, I think I think the wave of mental health problems that we're going to see hasn't quite broken on services yet, or, or some of it has, but I think a lot of people are just trying to get through day to day, they aren't necessarily yet thinking about coming to therapy, but I think as day to day life gets a little bit more predictable and settled, I think we will at that point see a lot of people sort of need, just needing to, to go somewhere to, to get some help with what they've been left with or what they've been through so um yeah yeah i know that i know that people are struggling it's, yeah we're, we're on a little ticking time bomb for mental health absolutely you you don't need to be a genius to know that uh we'll we'll get into talking about frenchmen in a bit which is a very different uh, topic however philippa i've got one thing for you um which uh, I, I i noticed in my research you play in a folk duo <laughs> yeah is that, that is that true yeah i didn't make it up yeah i'm not lying yeah <laughs> I, um, tell me about that well my husband is a musician and he's been you know he's done various kinds of music for for many 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 years and um along the way i kind of got involved as well and um we uh currently what we what we do together alongside his other music projects is we sing in a folk duo on the lincolnshire music scene and we're called the miracle cure and we have a facebook page so you can look us up if you really okay. want to know more <laughs> miracle cure that's all we all need right now so uh, yeah, that's going to be googled in a minute um <laughs> uh we've got a couple of minutes before um before sicily arrives so a question from laura van rensburg um for philippa loved safe and sound of uh, a story full of emotion and drama which authors have influenced your writing Oh my gosh, where do I even start? Uh, uh, I mean, I think I always go, there's one book that I always go back to, which really set me on the path of writing psychological thrillers, and that's Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. And I'm sure lots and lots of people listening to this will have read the book or at least have heard of the book. It was a huge bestseller, um, but it absolutely redefined and or defined the psychological thriller genre. So there've been there've been books before that looking back now, we would probably consider psychological thrillers like uh, Rebecca, for example, by Daphne du Maurier. You can probably consider that domestic suspense or a psychological thriller, but um, Gone Girl just really set the absolute benchmark for a cracking psychological thriller. And it was the first, like I'd, up to that point, I'd read a lot of, um, classics and, and literary fiction. I didn't really read a lot of commercial fiction because I think I just hadn't found something that that I really enjoyed. And then if Debbie actually, I think Debbie's here tonight. My friend Debbie Boomer lent me her copy of Gone Girl and said, you've got to read this. And initially I was like, mm, yeah, whatever. And then I, I started reading it and I was absolutely blown away, not least because it was a book that married an absolute page turn and really clever, intricate plot with really beautiful writing and a really incisive look at some really key sort of societal themes about relationships, about women's role in relationships and all of this kind of stuff. And I just consumed psychological thrillers nonstop after that and ended up kind of writing in that genre as well. So thanks Gillian, I appreciate it. Stu Cummings, how, uh, to, oh, actually hang on, Verily uh, Borthwick, Miracle Cure is great, look them up, I will do. Um, Stu Cummings, how do you manage to balance writing and your day job, it must be so challenging. Um, well, I, I cut down my hours is the short answer, so I used to work full time, I used to work full time in the NHS, which was really demanding. Um, and then in 2015, I left the NHS and set up my own practice and also went part time at that point. And that gave me a lot more control over my work and also, again, just freed up some time. And so I went from working full time down to working about three or four days a week. And now I actually am probably right down to about a day and a half a week. Um, and um, that feels like quite a nice balance now, actually. So it leaves me kind of four to five days in the week counting weekends to focus on writing um and then i do i do some um some practice work which kind of keeps me grounded in the real world a little bit i think and um means that i don't just get totally lost in my own um angst about about neuroses about my fiction work 
So listen, we we've gone half past. So we, um, uh, Cicely, would you like to join us? Thank you. And uh, Lorraine of Caroline, if you want to just um, um, pop off, if that's all right. Um, thank you, Cicely, for joining us. And um, uh, it's, it's an honor to have you uh, here. So Cicely is, um, is editor for Philippa and, uh, and, and works for HarperCollins HQ. So uh, Cicely, if you'd like to say a few words. Yeah, um, so happy to be here and thank you everyone for coming. This is fantastic. Um, I just wanna say how much a joy Philippa is to work with. Um, her books are kind of a joy to publish, even though they've got kind of dark themes, um, but it makes my job very easy. Um, but she works phenomenally hard and she tackles everything that we throw at her with so much enthusiasm, even edits, um, and is always wonderfully positive as well. Um, and luckily her books are great too and I'm not the only one who thinks so and I have to share a few quotes that we've had. Um, so Githa Lodge called Safe and Sound heartbreakingly realistic, Araminta Hall said it was tense, a tense anxious novel and Samantha M Bailey said it was tantalizing suspense and completely addictive so don't just take my word for it. Um, I remember reading the first draft of Safe and Sound and being hooked from page one. I had no idea where the story was going to go and the suspense just kept me furiously turning the pages. And I love the two sort of storylines and how cleverly they're woven together. And there's the voice of uh, the younger character, Prim, who just felt so authentic to me and kind of you only see as much as she sees and as much as Philippa wants you to see. And it just intrigues you so much and you, you just can't tell where it's going. And it's just brilliant. And the main character, Jen, she's this kind of prickly, anxious character. And you kind of you don't quite understand her at first, but it's, she just... Philippa gives her so much empathy and by the end of the book you're just kind of heart breaks for her and it's just fantastic um, and the thing that I personally find so fascinating we touched upon it before is kind of Philippa's experience obviously has been brought to this in terms of the psychological understanding of the characters but I think it's a real talent to show that on the page and to really get inside the mind of these characters and under their skin and I think that's what really speaks to people um, and the whole team at HQ, including Canada and Australia and uh, America, all so behind this book. And we love Philippa's books and we've just bought two more and we're really excited to publish them as well. And I know it's kind of been a strange publication road for Philippa with her first book, Little White Lies. Um, her editor switched just before publication um, and it was published just before we went into lockdown. So it's not a kind of usual fun and celebration that you would have had um, in a normal world um, and not to mention things like visiting bookshops and actually seeing your books on shelves sadly not something that's been possible but Philippa has been an absolute star um, and has come up with inventive ways to spread the word about her books and also support other authors too um, so I'm so grateful to everyone here um, for coming to help celebrate this launch for Philippa, Caroline and Lorraine um, and I'm going to hand back to Philippa and Ben but if you haven't already please buy the books they're brilliant. Fantastic thank you Cicely. Oh, thank you so much Cicely that's so lovely. <laughs> Is it slightly surreal to get um, the moment you start getting quotes from um, from from authors uh, from uh, other authors and and that realization that other people are reading your books? How exciting is that? Yeah, it's the it's the weirdest thing. Like um, uh, uh, like what, for example, Cicely read out the the quote by Araminta Hall, and I think about six months ago, I was sent an advanced copy of her most recent book, which is called um, Imperfect Women, and I like I've read. Um, uh um is it our cru our cruelties is it i can't quite remember what the first one's called but um i absolutely love that as well so so araminta hall is like an author who's like up there for me i'm like wow she's like this like amazing author and then it's like oh, she gave me a quote like oh my god little lord me what <laughs> and then you realize that so many authors are just like normal <laughs> like everyone's just like the same but Absolutely. it's amazing when there's a name that you you know you you know is a name on a book spine and then yeah they've read your book it's the weirdest feeling brilliant thank you Cicely for joining us and thank um, you very much if, if um, the other two guys want to join us again um let's move to Lorraine Lorraine thank you so much for um I, I, I love this you're the one uh, hardback um publisher today would did that fill you with a bit of dread knowing you're the only hardback in the in of the three well no it's exciting apart from I guess I can't see it anywhere that's the only problem because I did no, you know what I took 
a photo was taken in the shop and I promised you I would tweet it. Yes. I, I forgot to tell you what's the, <laughs> what's the first thing I'm going to do after this event. So uh, apologies for that. But uh, it's such a, a, a brilliant, brilliant book. And uh, and I love the name of it. Was the was uncoupling, I mean, that's so apt. Is that, uh, did that come first or is that, an, uh, uh, was it called something else in the process of writing? Um, yeah, it was called something else. It was called The Paris Train. Um, but... And actually, my boyfriend has suggested the name Uncoupling like years, I don't know, two or three years ago. And I've been like, no, 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 no. And then when I got my deal uh, with Orion, they sort of said that the Paris train sounds a bit like a sort of historical saga, I suppose. So we kind of banded around some names and that was what came up. So, yeah, my boyfriend was kind of smug about it. <laughs> um so Francis Quinn came in with a question, which is good, good timing. Hello, Francis. Um, Francis is uh, helping with um, uh, interviewing a couple of other authors next month, which is very kind of her. Um, question for Lorraine. Did you always know how uncoupling would end or did it change? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I had a kind of gut feeling about how it should end and kind of wrote it that way when I submitted it to agents and things like that. But because I was lucky enough to get um, a US deal at the same time. So I was working with two editors, one from Penguin Random House in the US and with um, my original editor, Victoria from Orion. So, I mean, it was amazing, but it's kind of double the amount of notes and double the amount of ideas. And so there was lots of back and forth about Sai, who was Hannah's boyfriend. So initially we begin with Hannah and Sai, um, they're in a relationship. So there's lots of back and forth about whether or not he should be like a kind of viable option for her, whether he should be kind of nice and therefore she's in this kind of love triangle or whether he should be terrible and it's very obvious what should happen at the end. So I should have asked, I should have asked if you want to give a quick summary of this, of, of, of the book um, that you're allowed to say without any spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers. Um, yeah, so it starts with a couple, Hannah and Sai, and they're on a night train traveling from Venice to Amsterdam to go to his sister's kind of lavish wedding. And she gets up in the middle of the night because she can't sleep and moves carriages. And when she wakes up, she's not in Amsterdam where she's supposed to be. She's in Paris and various things happen. And she ends up being stuck there for the day alongside this, I guess, initially quite annoying Parisian guy called Leo. And they spend the day together. And throughout the course of that day, I guess she begins to think about her life and think about the regrets that she has, think about where she wants it to go. And secrets are revealed about her relationship with Sai. And so she begins to question everything. So it's basically about a girl who needs to go in the wrong direction to work out what she wants in life. Very good, very good. Um, Sarah, very good question from Sarah. I'd love to hear more about the working on two sets of edits at the same time. Were there any, play I mean, first question, did the American um, market accept the name uncoupling? Is, does that work in, in America as well as the UK? Yeah, no, it doesn't. No. So they've called it the Paris connection. Oh. Um, because I don't think uncoupling means anything to do with trains. Um, and they said very much the Americans would love to have Paris in the title. They also got me to add in lots of kind of quintessential Parisian landmarks. So originally, originally I had them sort of very much around the Canal Saint-Martin, Montmartre, that sort of area. But the Americans were like, we want the Eiffel Tower, we want the Champs-Élysées, we want, you know, all this, you know. Yeah. So uh, I have to go um, back and do another research trip, basically. <laughs> just to top off Sarah's question, I mean, were there any um, any significant parts that um, there were disagreements in terms of storyline? No, luckily not. They were very much on the same page from what I remember. Um, but it was just a lot to take in, I suppose. I'd never had that kind of, you should get a kind of editorial letter. Um, obviously, these guys will know. And it's kind of, well, I don't know, I can only speak for myself, but mine was like, several pages long four or five pages long about you know we love it but you know <laughs> how about we change all of these things and so you know it was a bit overwhelming at first but it really made it a much much better book so you know it's worth going through all of that is there any anything in hannah in you is there a, some character traits some uh, parts of her yeah i think definitely parts of me kind of scattered throughout you know small parts of me so you know a lot of stuff about job dissatisfaction, I think, probably came from from inside of me because I was, you know, in jobs for a long time that I wasn't really enjoying. Stuff about relationships, you know, being in the wrong relationships for the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so I is um, 
he's a sort of controlling boyfriend um that uh, uh, he's um uh, well healed from berkhamstead uh which yeah, is that's near you right <laughs> well, well absolutely absolutely it's um i mean berkhamstead is our our near neighbors in tring so uh uh I mean, we, we, we kind of get on. And actually, I've got a lot of customers from Berkhamstead. <laughs> even though they've got a Waterstones, but they all come to me. But amazing. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, did you model Leo on anybody particularly? No. I mean, I guess he was kind of a fantasy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I love all things French. I love all things Parisian. Um, I guess the film was, it was very inspired by the film Before Sunrise. I don't know if you, you've all seen it, but Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy on a train, kind of having this initial connection, getting off the train. Um, so it was really, yeah, about what kind of person would Hannah have this initial connection with that would make her want to change her life, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you must have done a rather lovely walk through Paris um, to do your research. Um, yes. <laughs> when was that and who was that with? Yeah, so I did one May 2018 with my friend Louise, Hi, Louise, if you're watching. Um, and I basically, yeah, I owe her another trip. Actually, we have a trip booked, but we've had to postpone it about five times, obviously, um, because she came with me and she, she was basically dragged around Paris. I think we did something like, I don't know, some ridiculous amount of steps because I was like, I've got to go here, I've got to go here, I've got to go here. Um, but we did find time for lunch, wine and Gallery Lafayette. But it was, yeah, it was lovely. And then I went on my own once more just before lockdown um, to go back to these kind of quintessential places, which obviously I've been to, but hadn't really taken in or paid that much interest in. Yeah, I think we all need a bit of um, Paris at the moment. But uh, yeah. um, Lorraine, did you always have an affinity to Paris and know you'd set your book there? Yeah, I've been there so many times. I, mean, I love cities. I'm kind of obsessed with, with cities per se. Um, and that's probably the one that I know best outside of my hometown of London. So um, I always wanted to set it there. And I also, um, there's some chapters in Amsterdam and that's another city that I know pretty well because I've done sort of I don't know four or five visits there so I don't know for me it was important to set it in places where I could really bring it to life and kind of knew what it felt like to be there. Um, Laura question for Lorraine do you think you'll use the characters again in another book? Hi Laura um, I mean I'm trying not to <laughs> I've been writing book two over lockdown and I don't know, I kind of kept finding myself veering into like, am I just writing Hannah all over again in a slightly different kind of scenario? So yeah, at the moment, I'm, I'm very much trying to do the opposite of that. So that it's not the same book, just rehashed. Um, Alison, question for Lorraine. Congratulations, my friend in America is keen to read. Uh, what is the release date there? I mean, that's a good question. Hi, Alison. A lot um, of Americans watching as well, so. Yeah, that the release date there is, I think, August the 24th. So it's a kind of summer release. Um, yeah, I don't feel it's called The Paris Connection, so a bit different and a bit of a different cover, but yeah, it's very exciting. Fantastic. Good. Okay, so we're expecting um, Charlotte to join. So Charlotte, have you, are you there? Should we... Um... I'm there. Hi. So Charlotte is uh, Editorial Director at Orion, uh, Orion Fiction. And uh, thank you so much for joining and, uh, and helping us uh, this evening. Um, over to you, I'd like to, if you'd like to say a few words about uh, Lorraine and uncoupling. Yeah, definitely. And thank you so much, Ben, for organizing such, a br uh, organizing such a brilliant event tonight. It's been so wonderful to listen to everyone. Um, but yes, Lorraine, I am so thrilled to be here tonight to celebrate you and the release of Uncoupling tomorrow. Lorraine is a complete joy to work with, uh, not least because she's so incredibly talented. Uh, as Lorraine mentioned, we're actually working on book two at the moment. It's amazing. Um, but because she is just so lovely and the whole team at Orion just adores working with her. Uncoupling is a book that stole my heart from the very first pages. Uh, it's a delight from start to finish. It's the perfect escape from the strange world we are all living in right now. Uh, it tugs on all your heartstrings. It makes you laugh out loud, potentially snort out loud. Um, uh, so many times uh, it's impossible to count and it will have you dreaming of freshly baked croissants and the chocolate from a bakery in Paris. So trust me when I say this is the modern love story that we have all been waiting for. 
Congratulations on publication, Lorraine. I'm so thrilled for you. And I just can't wait to watch Uncoupling fly. And I'm very much looking forward to our virtual cocktails tomorrow. But for now, I'll hand back to you both. Fantastic. Thank you, Charlotte. Thanks, Charlotte. Thank you. And it's really exciting because, well, it was, it was a scary time for me because Charlotte came on board quite late in the day, I guess, because my original editor, Victoria, left. And it's always a bit scary when you get a new editor, I think, isn't it? And I was thinking, no, what if she hates the book? What if she doesn't really like me as much as Victoria did? And I don't know. But it was never like that with you. And um, it was so lovely. I felt really... You could never hate this book, Lorraine. <laughs> you could only fall in love with it. Well... <laughs> It's got, so. uh, it's got it's got film written all over it, I think. So in some in one form or another, I don't know if there's. Uh, it's probably very early days as yet, but. Um... Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charlotte, for joining no us. No problem. Yeah. The other guys like to. So we we're entering our last fifteen minutes. So I think I I'd already already always allocated these last few minutes for um, a load of thank yous, really. So I'm sure, uh, keep in mind, I've already read the, uh, the back page pages to your book. So I know um, you've got a lot of people to thank for, um, uh, for getting you to this point. The fact that we're, we're here today seems very surreal, I suspect. But uh, so um, uh, who wants to go to Caroline? Do you want to go first? Sure. Um, yeah, speaking about the acknowledgements, I wrote that I think a year ago, <laughs> um, before a lot of the process had, had, um, had happened, so before own marketing, publicity and things like that. So um, I guess I want to say massive thanks to Hayley um, and everyone at Madeleine Milburn uh, Literary Agency. And then also everyone at Simon & Schuster, um, like Lorraine, my original editor um, left, but um, she was a huge part of this book. Um, Beck Farrell, I don't know if she's watching, but hi, Beck, if you are. Um, so I want to say a massive thank you to her. And then all the team at Simon & Schuster who've um, done so much for the book. Um, Harriet, Jen, Alice, SJ, um, my new editor, Molly, um, Claire, who was my sort of interim editor, <laughs> um, Dom on audio. There's so many, so many people that um, have, have done so much for this book. Um, and then, of course, friends and family. I'm not going to list them all, but you know who you are. Um, yeah, it's just been wonderful to have everyone's support. And I think particularly in the last few days and weeks, um, I've just been kind of blown away by everyone just being so supportive and buying the book, um, which still feels quite surreal. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, and then also we mentioned the, the debut 20 authors. Um, they've been a massive support and also the 2021 lot. There's another Facebook group for them <laughs> and everyone's just been so supportive. And again, I think, um, that's something that I didn't really expect was to have the support of other authors and established authors as well who have quoted for the book and things like that. Um, it just feels like a really lovely community to be part of. So I'm really glad to be a little part of it now. Brilliant, brilliant. Anita sends a nice message to you all saying congratulations, well done. Um, Philippa, do you wanna say a few, um, uh, a few thank yous? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, obviously, massive thank you to Cicely, who you just... Sorry. <laughs> Lorraine, tell us, go to you. So um, do you want to um, do a few thank yous? Yeah, sure. So thank you, well, initially to my brother, Matthew, and his partner, Helen, who gave me the idea for the book because they went on a trip, I don't know how many years ago, 10, 15 years ago, across Europe, um, Eastern Europe, and got separated on a night train because she got up to move seats. And it'd always been ticking away in my mind thinking, that would make a really good book. So thank you. Um, thanks to my mum for all of those library trips. Thanks to my lovely friends, especially Louise for aforementioned trip to Paris and Alex for our trip to Amsterdam. Um, to my boyfriend, Robbie, and little boy, Gabriel, because I'm sure they were sick of me tapping away on my laptop constantly every evening. Um, my amazing agent, Hannah, she was like my dream agent that I kind of stalked on Twitter for like years and never thought I would ever have as my agent. And she just looked so nice and so approachable and had this amazing list of authors. So I couldn't believe it when I signed with her. And thank you to everyone at Orion, um, Victoria and Charlotte, Elena and Lucy. Thank you so much for everything. Yeah. And, um... Actually, Nicola puts uh, Nicholas Smith. Would you like? This is a question for you, Lorraine. Would you like to set another novel aboard, and where would you most like to visit? Yeah, good question. I mean, I really wanted to set my next novel in Rome. It's somewhere I've been once, but 
you know, it's one of those places that is just so vast that you could, you know, you can't do it all in one trip. So I had this vision of, yeah, of going to Rome and, and researching a novel, but that's not happening. So my next novel is set in sunny London. <laughs> so, you know. I will, I'm going to ask you all um, um, what you're working on on uh, the next books. Um, Catherine Gale, I can't wait to read your book, Lorraine. Um, which authors are your biggest influence? Oh, yeah, good question. I mean, people like Marion Keyes. When I was younger, I would read kind of Jackie Collins and Julie Cooper, all of that real escapist stuff, I suppose. Um, but when I was writing Uncoupling, I actually was reading a lot of psychological thrillers, even though I kind of thought to myself, I could never write a psychological thriller because I could never plot it. You know, I just, I can't, don't know how, how those writers do it. Um, but I think that kind of gave me a sense of, I want to put some pace and tension into into my novel so yeah fantastic and uh, another another question for Nicola Gill um you know how much I loved uncoupling uh, and one of my favorite things about how much uh I was rooting for Hannah from the first page my question is how much did you know about her character before you started writing yeah interesting well when I first wrote it my first draft I think it was a bit kind of it was not three-dimensional, but handily, I was doing a counselling course, so kind of a bit like Philippa, um, I was learning to be a counsellor and sort of looking at why we are the way we are and sort of how childhood influences who we are now and our relationships that we have. So I was able to go back and kind of put to sort of other layers into the novel, which I think I would never have got a deal or an agent had I not been doing that course. I really think they were really connected in that way. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm getting so many, so many questions. I apologise to those that I'm going to miss out. We've got nine minutes. Uh, I was about to go to Philippa then. She's uh, clearly playing, playing, playing with us. Um, great question here from an anonymous attendee. Uh, for all three, if you could have your dream cast for a film or TV adaptation of your books, who would play your lead characters? OK, so um, Lorraine, let's start with you. Who would be your lead character? Oh, God. Um... You must have thought about it, surely. I find it easier to, uh, to no, to cast Leo. In my head, it would be Noah Centineo from to all the boys I've to all the boys I've loved before. I'm kind of obsessed with him. Or I'm also obsessed with Paul Mescal from Normal People. In fact, also Daisy Edgar Jones from Normal People. Just basically those two <laughs> in my film. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. And uh, and who would play Sai the? Uh, the, the well-to-do guy from Berkhamstead. Yeah, I'm feeling like a sort of Theo James type. Good looking, but kind of a little bit too perfect. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And Caroline, have you given um, who, who would play your characters uh, any thought? I've actually never, never thought of that. <laughs> so I don't really have an answer for you. <laughs> I don't know. I think that seems like such a... Um, such a sort of pipe dream that um yeah i've never considered it i don't know i'd have to give that more thought <laughs> yeah yeah no worries no worries philippa are you here are you staying <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> someone kept calling me and i'm not even sure who it was so i tried to disconnect the phone and i just ripped the internet out instead <laughs> oh no <laughs> brilliant well before you rip it out anymore do you want to do a few thank yous and um and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, so first of all, thank you to Cicely, who you heard from earlier. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with her. She's she's been amazing. And also, just to say a thank you to Charlotte as well, who was my editor for Little White Lies before she swapped over um, to Lorraine. Um, and a massive thank you to my agent Sarah Sarah Hornsley, who always makes you do a massive rewrite of my books because I'm always going in the wrong direction with them before she takes a look. And um, <laughs> she stops me from just driving my books off a total cliff. So, <laughs> so thank you, Sarah, for that. Um, obviously to my family, lots of you are here tonight. Um, thank you, Verily and Anna. And um, I think I saw Andy there um, and Carolyn and my mum and dad and my sister. Um, thank you so much. And especially to my in-laws who I think are here tonight as well. They've been absolutely amazing in getting behind this whole crazy publishing, writing novels thing. And they've read my books and they've been so lovely about them. So massive thank you to them. Um, and um, big special thanks to my husband who's been sitting very quietly in the background here. You didn't realize, but he is. And uh, <laughs> thank you to him. 
Um, now, there were a few email questions, so I must do those because um, I think they get priority. Um, uh, Laura, in Leicester, question to Lorraine. Basically, wherever you're traveling in the world, she wants to come with you. I don't know if that's <laughs> hard, but... Um, well, right, you can. <laughs> maybe that's just weird, but uh, let's see if you get that. Um, um, Alison Johnson-Smith, congratulations to all of you. How do you come up with the names for your characters? That's quite an interesting question. So, Lorraine, quickly, um, how do you come up with the names for your characters? Yeah, um, just try a few different ones out on the page and see what feels right. It's a bit hit and miss, sorry. <laughs> And, and when you finally finished it and you've decided actually you're going to call him, call him Sai, is it just a replace all, whatever the word document thing you can do? Where you yeah, do I think I might have done a replace all. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I did. And that's, it's a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? Because it always goes a bit wrong. But yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. And Caroline, the names in your book? Um, well, I don't really have a, a sort of method. I guess it, they just pop into my head. But I find it once, once I've written, even if it's just a bad first draft, once I've written a character's name, I can't seem to change it. <laughs> I really struggle because I just then think of them with that name. So I'm not sure I could do a, just a find and replace or even if I don't like the name or I, I find it really hard once I've christened them to, to change their name, they're, they're stuck with it. Yeah, whilst, um, whilst you're talking, actually, The Other Daughter is such a good read and we can't put it down. This is from m and I don't know whether Marks and Spencer's are around. Uh, <laughs> oh, <maybe> <laughs> um, can't put it down. Question for Caroline. Tell us about your next book. Uh, my next book is um, another dual timeline novel. Um, I've basically been writing it in lockdown. Um, and I just today had some very lovely feedback from Molly, my editor. So thank you, Molly. Um, it's a dual timeline set uh, in the 50s and present day. Um, and it's partly set in Lyon in France. So another one for people who love France. Um, I, I spent a year in Lyon as a student, so, um, and I love the city. So I was then hoping to go for a little recce um, research trip, but I haven't been able to yet. So hopefully I'll be able to soon, we'll see. Very good, very good. Um, let's I'll tell you what, Philip, I didn't come to you about your, how you came up with the naming, um, naming for your characters in your book. Uh, it's, it's really random to be honest that there's not there's no great complexity behind it and in fact like after I'd written the first draft of uh, Safe and Sound and sent it to my agent I realized that the dead woman has got the same name as my agent and I was like oh sorry Sarah <laughs> like I didn't I didn't even realize and there's also a character in the book that's got the same name as my dad and then I realized that and then I had to be like dad it's not you so it's pretty it's pretty random there's only so many there's only so many names so you're gonna you're just gonna end up using whatever and most people don't have hugely interesting names, so yeah, yeah it's just whatever, whatever comes to hand, to be honest. <laughs> Listen, well, I'm conscious that we're coming to, we've only got two minutes left, and um, it's been an absolute honour to uh, host this. It's, uh, I kind of thought this would be carnage uh, in terms of how we managed to do this. And I don't, I think, Lorraine, it was your idea, wasn't it, to, to do a, a three-way uh, but actually, I think it's worked. Um, at least, at least I think to myself, where I'm hosting it. So maybe I'm not mo the most objective person. But uh, thank you for having the idea, anyway, Lorraine. Yeah, it was basically so I could avoid just having myself on the screen for an hour and everyone staring at me. So thank you, Philippa and Caroline. It's made made it so much better. Great, thanks, Lorraine. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, let's just do a quick couple of questions. Um, Philippa, what is next for you? This is from Kirsten Hesketh. Uh, yeah, so as um, Cicely mentioned, I've just signed a new um, deal with HQ HarperCollins for another two books, which is which I'm absolutely thrilled about. And the one that I'm working on at the moment, which should be coming out um, February 2022, uh, is about um, two neighbouring suburban families whose secrets and... Um, hidden aspects of their lives get thrown to the forefront when a reality TV crew um, descends on their lives. Wow, wow, that's, uh, that sounds amazing. So but congratulations on, um, on the two, two, two book deal as well. Listen guys, we're now hitting um, eight o'clock. Thank you for your time. Thank you to the audience for joining. Um, I'm conscious there's a whole heap of books that we, uh, we need to get out to you. Many of you have received and there's many that haven't a load 
of Lorraine Brown book, uh, books arrived today. So uh, tomorrow is all about getting them out. But, uh, and thank you. And um, guys, well done. Congratulations. And, uh, and here's to uh, a career in novel writing. Well done, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Ben. Cheers. Cheers Join and we'll see you very soon. Cheers, Anne.